jackets. You've kept the jeans on? Well, I have to wear pants. Well, no, but like the same <laughs> ones? So you're just it's wearing blue jeans on all of them. Oh, they're going to know. And the same shoes. Oh, my God. Are you sure you're the principal broker? She's I'm, like better dressed than you. Probably not. <laughs> One of the things that blew Wait, me away. Wait, is this running? Yeah, of course. Wait, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we've been recording oh, the whole that. time. Oh, I didn't know okay. that. You're being mean to me. One of the uh, <laughs> things that impacted me, a takeaway during the interview process, was your terrible lighting, your poor camera That's angle. not true. <laughs> I had a ring light. That's not true. <laughs> of course you did. That's Maybe not you have true. one around your desk. <laughs> no. um, was you said something to me that immediately I was like, this is, this is someone I want on my team. And you probably don't remember what you said. I think I know. You said... I'm tired of constantly beating a target that I don't get rewarded for. And I was like, that is somebody I want on my team. Mm -hmm. Do you remember saying that? Yeah. That's not what I thought you were going to say, but definitely. Well, what did you think I was going to say? <laughs> I thought you were going to say, for, like, you, I think you asked me, like, why Newboro? And um, for me, it was because... Um, I said, like, as a consumer myself, I want to work with someone who's done it like 50 times instead of five times. And that day, I think I had like eight interviews back to back. And I, one of the major brokerages, I asked them, like, your um, top agent, how many deals do they do in a year? And she said X, Y, and Z. And then I asked you that question, and it was like 10 times the amount. So I was like, as a consumer, would I want to work with someone who's done 10 or who's done 100? And then I was like, I would have to be at any other brokerage for 10 years to get the experience I'd get here for a year. That's what I thought you were going to say, but I know what you're talking about. <laughs> well, today's guest on Agents in Pieces is, you want the intro? Yeah, yeah. Because I, I wrote you a really nice one and I remembered all of it. Is somebody who immediately from the minute, uh, the very first interview, even though I don't do the hiring, I was like, man, I really hope they pick her. I think she's going to be a super good brand ambassador which is not what I think of everybody in the very first seconds. She's proven to be that. I can't think, I was just thinking before we sat down, I don't think you have a single client that it doesn't like you. you, don't, you I have, hope I don't. Well, okay, <laughs> but when you touch that many mortgages and that many lawyers have to get involved to close things and lenders have to get involved to move money, there's going to be problems. And you, don't, you have somebody who's been waiting to do a mortgage through post-COVID forever. Yeah. And yeah. still wants to take your phone calls. You are yeah. just, uh, I said this about another, you're such a bright light. You're such a positive person, not with me, but with other people. <laughs> yeah. And you are, you encapsulate what we try and do here all the time. And you got that right out of the gate. So today's guest is Manisha. I refer to her as Manisha or I hate you. But she <laughs> is, More I hate you. <laughs> is um, a big part of our success in our team. And I'm so happy to have you on the show today. Thank you. That was really nice. Yeah. I've been here for a year. I don't think you've ever said anything nice to me. That's, a, that really nice. that's probably yeah. But to be fair, Hey, I've been here for six and I agree same, with you. Right? <laughs> <laughs> um, but to be fair to what you said, I would be shocked if there was anyone here that had a client that didn't like them. Like I would genuinely be shocked. Uh, well, when we have Jazz from Client Care on, okay. yeah. she, uh, uh, she, she might will run in here and say, oh, uh, wait a minute. Yeah, yeah, those skeletons that we've hidden deep in the closet it's might just, fall out. When you do the volume of deals, you're going to, it just, I, I say this it's too, when we, I think we hire anybody new in Client Care, and we'll get into your episode in a second, I promise, but I ask them, what is, what's the happiest place on earth? Yeah. And after some back and forth, most people will say, oh, Disney. Mm -hmm. Cool. Google them. They do not have a 5.0 rating. No. They don't have five stars. And people spend tens of thousands of dollars, I know, yeah. to take your kids there, <laughs> yeah. your family. And, most, and there's lots of bad reviews. And yeah. when I say, like, you don't have one. That's, and I'm not putting that out in the universe for you to get one, touch yeah. black, but... It, that's, that speaks a lot to who you are and how much you care about customer service. Yeah. And I think we could say, most people are like, oh, no, I'm really good at customer and keeping customers happy. But that's not true. You get busy, you drop the ball, you have to pick it back up, and you don't seem to do that. Yeah. Why? Um, 
I think during our year review, you asked me like, what's your financial target? And this sounds crazy because like, obviously it's a job, but I genuinely don't have one. Like I want to be really good at what I do, but more than that, it's like, I want each individual person to have a really good experience with me. So check yeah. you do that. Yeah. Right. That's yeah. when I listen to phone calls and, or we do, we do a, an audit. We talk about the deal. You're genuinely <laughs> like on cloud nine, this client loves me. I love her. I can't wait to help him or her. Yeah. And those are the words, the buzzwords I always look for. Not, you know, oh, this is the best product that's yeah. never. Yeah. And so, but that's the trap and you don't fall into it. So I remember when you first got here and I had to pull you aside and we'll talk about your history and where you came from, but this was an impactful moment for me. We pulled you aside and I was probably nice to you, which is not like me. And then I said, your clients are our clients are not your parents or yeah. you're what you're used yeah. to and we talked about that in another episode where it's your your parents who put or help you with your finances or what you understand about finances and your yeah. parents have, are not you know you were like i don't know why, why why this place exists or why people come here in yeah. a sense right you knew but you know what i mean yeah, like yeah. you were that was a struggle for you to get the products and what we're doing and how we're helping people work through their particular problem. Yeah. What was that adjustment like? Um, I think it's not just, I mean, you can relate to the parents thing, but on top of that, I came from the bank. So I think you told me, I think you said you didn't think I was going to make it. Yeah, because, I know. Because yeah. bank it's, people generally don't translate or don't do the uh, easy transition because you're different client base. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, yeah, I know coming out of even the course, like what I thought I was going to do and what I actually do are like what people think we do and what yeah. we actually do are like right. two different things. <laughs> yeah. No, it took a minute. In the beginning, I remember I'd go home and I was like, I don't understand it. Like, I cannot understand why yeah. this makes sense. Now I'm like, I think it's a little bit, I mean, narrow minded, but I'm like, if you're going to do this, you should only do it through Nuboro yeah. because like it only makes sense here. And but. I think that like, Speaking off of your point, we really capture that not e not every situation's cookie cutter. 100%. And interviewing you, you were the definition of a cookie cutter, right? Um, it was very standard, and it was what was expected of you from where your past was. Obviously, knowing you now, you are not that at all. Yeah. Um, but I think that the bank, not only with their employees but with their clients, have a very standardized form. And life isn't standard. Our clients aren't standard. Life isn't standard. There is no normal. Mm -hmm. um, so you really allow our clients to open up to you and not feel like they are in any way different from another situation and you handle them with the utmost care. And I think that's what's crazy to think is that you came from an environment that was timed phone calls. We're here, you talk to clients for 45 minutes mm -hmm. and you really get to know them. And that's why their feedback is so authentic mm -hmm. because they are really speaking to the person that really cares about them and understands the position they're in. Yeah. And that's why you're here. And that's why you continue to be as successful as you are and don't have anyone that doesn't like you because there's no need, need not to like you aside, aside from him. Yeah. But, but that goes mutual both yes ways. Uh, yes it goes um, both ways I think the hardest part for me actually working where I was like I did well on paper but like I hated it internally because like you said we were timed so you could be on the call with the client for five minutes and during the pandemic our call volumes were like four hours so you'd have to wait four hours to get on a call wow. with us for five minutes but then it wasn't just like an average like it's oh my god I can't even flashbacks but you go in red if you're if you're on a call for more than five minutes you go in red so your supervisor messages you and says wrap it up and I'm like you have no idea what this client's telling me like this is COVID they've missed three credit card payments like they're going into collections x y and z and you're like wrap it up yeah I was like they genuinely could not care less like they don't care and I care so much that it was like eating away at me like I genuinely started to hate it like I hated yeah getting on in the morning. I was like looking forward to getting off. I didn't like it. It was really robotic for me. Yeah. Then they yeah. obviously didn't have a firm start time because we sure don't have oh. one here, right? I don't know what <laughs> you're talking about. Flexible here. <laughs> flexible. That's I live really far. It, yeah. right? So how, so you come from the bank and you were in mortgages credit or cards. Credit, cards, credit cards, right? You're in a different environment. You applied to eight places roughly, or you said, or you yeah. did it? And you land 
here and you go through that process. When you finished the first round with me, did you want, like, what was the, did you want this job? Did you want to be here? Yeah, so I did, I think, eight in a day. I had them back to back. And I remember after I met with you, I was like, I had a couple more. And I went downstairs and I was like, this, that's it. This is what I want. And I remember my dad saying, don't put all your eggs in one basket. And yes. I was like, they're all, wise. no, no, no. I was like, they're all in there. <laughs> like, I don't even care about the rest of the day. I don't know. I mean, I know what it was, but... Yeah, I was like, I don't care. I was so, I remember being so checked out of the rest of my interviews because I was like, my mind was with here. I was like, I want it so bad. I made a TikTok, how bad I wanted it. <laughs> don't yeah. watch it, but it's <laughs> up, it's still up there. <laughs> so quick update, best interview I've ever done in my whole entire life. I can't, did, you, did your, did it go to junk mail when I, yeah. we gave you the offer, mm -hmm. right? I think we met on like Wednesday was my second one. And then Thursday, Jazz sent me the offer, but it went to junk. Then it was Friday. And then I remember my dad saying, it do, they're not going to get back to you on Monday. Like, you would have already known. Um, and then Jazz emailed me, and she was like, hey, you never responded to the offer letter. You're like, what? Like, what <laughs> offer letter? Yeah, no, I was thrilled. Yeah. I mean, we are infamous for... I guess uh, slower than usual turnaround, but usually when we're confident in who we have, you'll get yeah. an offer pretty fast. Well, wasn't yeah. I think I said this to you a couple of days ago? Each round or each time we add someone to a team, and we don't have a la massive turnover. No, some, we're ex or we're expanding. There is an upwards 200, 300 applications to go through. Yeah, before you go through me and then the next round, yeah. like. You are one, when we did that, we talked about it yesterday, you were one of 200 yeah. To, yeah. to go through the process. And the crazy thing too is your work experience doesn't speak to who you are. Like yeah. those time phone calls are beyond me because I hear you on the phone and I hear the connections you make. So to think that you would be on a time constraint speaking to someone when I know how much you care about our clients and you're afraid to like miss a text message. Yeah. It's funny she says that because like um, everything was on paper, like they're, it's super, super like followed. Um, so it's like, I would do phenomenal. Like I did like 400% of my sales target. We got NPS like surveys um, out of like thousands of phone calls that you do, five get randomly surveyed. I would do phenomenal there. The time it was like <laughs> targets five, I was at like eight. I could never hit my time target because I genuinely cared. Like yes. they would say, I'll give you an example. And I know I'm talking about this a lot, but I feel strongly sure. about it. Um, they would say like, for let's say password reset, give the um, password and let them on their way. And I'm like, no, there's 70. I wanna make sure that they waited this long to talk right. to me. I wanna make sure that they get in before I get off the phone. Because yes. 10 out of 10 times they can't. They need someone to walk them through it. So yeah, yeah I struggled with the time. Yeah, but that's not a problem. That's not an issue. No, I Here it's more. a strong suit. Yeah. I'm, all, I'm often challenging some of the agents who still do well, yeah, but yeah. to yeah. give more of yourself to yeah. know what's happening. There isn't a time you've walked out of a, a client meeting that I recall, unless you don't want to talk to me about it, just yeah. like, where you're like, I didn't know. Yeah, it's I true. I didn't know. Like, I think of one which isn't necessarily an impact, just an example of what you're doing, which is an impact to us and how we do things, and it will be to the client down the road. You're going deep on someone who wants to buy a business to make sure that it makes money. Yeah. Yeah, I Most like he wants. Do not care. Hundred percent, he wants it, and I'm like, wait, hold on. I need to make sure that you, this makes sense for you, because I think I'm missing something, because it doesn't make sense for me. And I like that because I feel like that's kind of why they trust me. I'm like super honest. I'm like, if this doesn't make sense for you, I don't want you to do it. You know? Yeah. So, but we're all like that. I feel. Yeah, yeah, I agree, and I, I think that's like you have to lead with transparency and honesty, right? So, as much as there is a dream or a vision. Sometimes we have to ride with it too, right? Sometimes our clients want someone to believe in them mm -hmm. and they're looking for that person says, wow, that is a great idea. Yeah. I actually can't wait for this. Mm -hmm. Keep me posted with the business endeavor, but they're also looking for a, a, like a voice of reason. Mm -hmm. So it's, listen, we can do this, but this is what we're looking at. Mm -hmm. And really having an open dialogue because a yeah. lot of people feel like they're being fed an agenda mm -hmm. or they're being fed what they need to do. And truthfully, we're all adults here. Sometimes it's not... You don't want to hear what you don't want to hear, yeah. right? But sometimes honesty is what's best. And ultimately, we have our clients who can't wait to sell us their dream of the invention that they're looking to create or this vision or dream that they have. Mm -hmm. And the only person in, our, in their way is us. Mm -hmm. So if we can be a part of their team and get them to where we need to, then heck, I'm all in. Yeah. 
You the, have me sold. The feedback face I get when I, on new people who are on the team when I say the following, doing this, borrowing money in second position or a line of credit on, against your house is a really bad idea. Yeah, 100%. And their look on their face, we're like, what? In reality, borrowing money without a plan is a terrible plan. Yeah, 100%. And you plan like crazy. Yeah. Which was some top, but you also, you would have to have that in you. You just had, you really wanted to create the best plan. Yeah, I actually say this in all my first client meetings and I think sometimes it's a little negative, but it's just honest. I always say, look, doing this is so easy. Like you can do this anywhere. Getting out of this is incredibly hard. Yeah. And what makes us different is our team. Like no, and you guys keep complimenting me and I just keep thinking um, like the care thing. Um, I feel like everyone has that. That's the core of every single agent here. Our delivery is a little different, but the core is that we all genuinely, genuinely care. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. No more compliments. Yeah. Oh. She's done. Yeah. So what, <laughs> you're done now. Yeah. What is it about Newboro when you, and I know you do this already. Yeah. You, you share with me that people reach out to you on social media. You've been All a big, time. you're the reason we restarted social media yeah. saying to like, we have a great team. we do great things. Your social media sucks. And it yeah. does. We're yeah. working on it. I don't know who works harder, Chris Jenner or Manisha. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure. But yeah. you <laughs> kickstarted that and right away you're like, oh, look at these people who are, we don't get a ton of likes on our stuff, but people are call, texting me saying that was so funny or you're getting, uh, look at these people are DMing, asking me if I yeah. can work here. I get yeah. it all the time. Just all the time. Crazy to me. But what do you tell, like, what is it about Newboro that's 30 second reel or whatever minute reel is not selling new borrow. It's just what we do every day. Yeah. We have a lot of fun and what we do, it's a high stress job. Month end is, there's a Super there's pressure. Yeah. You can't do a hundred and, let's just do a hundred. You can't do 140. We did 140 in 22 days. You can't do those numbers without yeah. some pressure. Yeah. yeah. What 100%. is it about new that makes that all work for you? Um, I don't know. You know how I feel about this. I actually hate doing the interviews. I tell them all the time because it's such a moral dilemma for me because when I go in there, I'm like, okay, hey, like we have something so special here and like it's hard to bring somebody in because I'm like, this job is such a privilege that I, you have to be like super worthy of it. Yes. But then at the same time, I'm like, oh, I don't want to, like this is such a blessing for me and I don't want to block somebody else's. Yeah. So I tell them all the time, I'm like, I actually hate doing that because <laughs> yeah. it's like a legit moral dilemma for me. 100%. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And that's why I think too, like coming from probably the hardest interviewer when it comes to you critiquing are. people yeah. um, is exactly that reason. Mm -hmm. Is there, you need to see the fire within someone that they do see what value working here is and the value we give back to clients as opposed to just another place to work. Yeah. And that's what puts agents that have been here for a long time as opposed to agents who come and go apart from each other. Let's circle back to something you said at the top of this episode and you say it often. If, and I believe this too, I just told a really good friend of mine in real estate who called me for advice and said, what the client, we kind of passed them over, the client over to the agent because they needed help selling. And he called me and said, listen, like what they want to do doesn't make sense. And I said to him, I agree especially without a plan, but would you rather them do it with somebody who's not going to care, mm -hmm. who's going to do it for a number or a commission, or would you like a team of people like we have to kind of help generate or push along a path of success? And wouldn't you like to be the agent that helps in that and you have a team like 30 other people who want to make that happen? And you say this all the time where you're like, and you said at the top, I'm biased, but if you're going to do this. Do it with us. You do it with me. Yeah. You do it. And I, I, that's care. my attitude yeah. when people call me. If you're going to do this, it's a bad idea. Number yeah. one. Yeah. Number two, I can make it a great idea, but you got to want to do it with me and you got to help me help you. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's not even biased because like we see, like we consolidate people who have been doing something for like five years. And every time I always say, and maybe it is biased, I don't know. But I say, God, if you did this here five years ago, it would have ended four years ago. Like yeah. we would have got you out of he out of this in a year. Yeah. So, yeah. And yeah. it's just because genuinely because we care. And I think too, our clients, there's no wrong time to start. It's just finding that. 100%. And our, a lot of our clients say, I wish I found you this sooner. Yeah. I wish I found you a month sooner. Right. But reinstilling that hope mm -hmm. and finding a solution and a plan mm -hmm. starts today. 
100%. So you found us today. We can work on it. And yes, sometimes there's a little bit more undoing that needs to happen. In hindsight, it's always 2020. Yeah. But if you're going to do it, the best place to do it is with us, the team that handles it with care. And we'll, in fact, kind of take into account every potential hurdle or loophole or anything that you might come across in order to get to that destination, right? It's Yes, it's about the destination, but we're on the journey with you. Yeah. You know, right? it's so good here that it's almost not believable. Like I do you not you you do more interviews than anyone. Anyone I've stepped into, I always get, okay, you guys can't all love it this much. Like I'm waiting for the ball to drop. Yeah. And I always say I've been here for a year, so <laughs> am I, like it doesn't drop. Yeah. I get that all the time. You I know, some people agree. get to the point where they don't want to do well, I'm pretty hard on the process mm, and the yeah. customer care. And sometimes you run into it as an agent. You're so busy. You're like, yeah, this step is not important. And those steps you skip or you go to another brokerage and start taking those things out and you don't want to do that. And you don't need to do this. Yeah. I can't speak for what happens there. I only can speak yeah. what happens here. And those processes, I made mistakes. I'm yeah. not the broker. I'm a client. Yeah. I made these mistakes to build this company and the processes are in check so that the clients know what they're doing. If you skip those steps, you're, you're missing what we're doing. And I think that's, I think that's when you say it's a privilege to work here. And why would you not? Some people just don't want to do the, do the yeah. steps. They yeah. want to do it fast. Yeah. Cut corners. And if you cut corners in what we do, it's expensive. It yeah. costs yeah. people time and money. Yeah. On that note, and you and I talked about this and being like at the comfort level of impact stories, clients that have really, you've solved a big problem and you're like, oh, you know, I don't want to share their, yeah. their personal stories, but there's got to be one that stands out that it really touched you. Oh no, there's not one. There's like, I remember when we did the lend a hand, picking one person, picking three so people. Hard. I was like, I, I have like 10 names in my head right now. Yeah. Um, no, so the only reason I said to you before I was like, I don't want to share is because I feel like I get so personal. Like the client that I have in mind right now, I know more about her than I know about some of my friends. Like I know, <laughs> wow. I, I know her favorite. So flowers. are you a good like, mortgage agent or are you a good friend? <laughs> <a> good <therapist. laughs> she was going through a divorce and we went through the whole process of closing. Like we went through her finding out the cheating stories. Like she told me everything. And wow. I, I genuinely cared because she's a single mom. She has a little baby. So cute. Um, and I cared. I was like, she called me non-mortgage related. I kid you guys not. She would update me <laughs> on like the separation. The scandal. Yeah, the scandal. <laughs> like the things she wanted to do. And I was like, no, no. I almost said her name. I was like, you don't want to do that. <laughs> You're going to regret it. Yeah, no, we wow. were like legitimately friends. That's yeah. so deep. Like, if she's watching this, she's such a boss woman. I'm so excited <laughs> for her year end because she's going to go back to the bank and have her property in her name, that man out of her life, her daughter full time. She has a really, really cool job, makes a great income, was just in a bad situation. And I know 100% that it, like it's a bulletproof plan. She's getting out of it this year and I'm so excited for her. And that's, I've talked about it in episodes before. That's why I hate the title mortgage agent because it's just something you have to call yourself. But mm -hmm. that is not, like if you listed off the things, the professions or the titles you actually encompass here yeah yeah you can't call yourself a financial planner you can't no. call yourself a personal therapist no. you can't but you do so many things oh, for 100%. people yeah yeah that has to be taxing too right it's not like it takes a toll out of you when you've yeah. got 12 clients you're doing mm -hmm. all those things for no I, I get overly invested too i remember one day she called me and i just didn't want to miss her call it was like 7 30 p.m and i pulled over at the no frills parking lot and we just talked for about 45 minutes just because she needed to vent. But yeah, it does. I think you're similar to me. It does eventually weigh on you. Yeah. Um, but when you get to the finish line, it's like all worth so it. So rewarding. Yeah. yeah. Guys, I feel like it's not believable. Like it, this is all like, <laughs> yeah. but it truly is, is how it is. Yeah. I do get, uh, so I'll tell a quick funny story before we wrap up. I remember getting a call from my daughter. Her and her friends were reading reviews and she called oh, me and I said, know. Dad. Yeah. I know you, but you're not this great. Yeah. Oof. Are those real? And I'm I like, mean, she's yes. right, but well, yeah, I know. No. I know. Yeah, but yes, no. that is the good and the bad. Yeah, right. That is those are real client stories when yeah. they share personal stories. So when at the like the data behind reviews, you have to send out 200 to get two. 
yeah. Google mm. reviews, right? We have lots internally. We have a thousand on Google, but it's that's somebody on now that's easy to give me a five star or a four yeah. star or a one star. Mm -hmm. It's harder for a client to then get on and say, hey, yeah. this is what happened. Yeah. And yeah. This is what they did. I read the internals. The internals are always way more detailed. Yeah. Yeah. Than what you're willing to share online, which I completely get. Yeah. Yeah. But 100%. That, I always look at both of them and be like, hey, that was a job like yeah. mission accomplished. And if I, someone says that. Yeah. And I think too that speaks to the confidence in the client situation. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people are would rather be invisible when it comes to their situation and fly under the radar and not communicate or talk about it. But because we give them the confidence in regaining control. They have the ability to say, hey, listen, my whole life was turned upside down, believe it or not, and I still saw the light at the end of the tunnel. And that's what's important to us. And that's why those Google reviews speak to it because truthfully, we encourage our clients when we first speak to them to read those. They don't have the same amount of impact until the client goes back 100%. and reads them over and says, mm -hmm. wow, I agree. This client shared the exact same experience with me with the exact same agent I had, and they got me the exact same results. And if you read our reviews, like how honest people are, like truthfully, I don't even think I would admit that no. with my full name on um, the internet. Yeah. So imagine the impact or the experience they would have had to have felt comfortable to be like, yeah. hey, I was in a ton of debt. Yeah. I was not in a good situation. Yeah. But it's because they trust in the process mm -hmm. and they trust in the plan. Mm -hmm. And it was, listen, I had no hope and I found it. And yeah. I found it with the agents and I found it with the plan and I found it with Newboro. Mm -hmm. And that's why coming back to, I guess, the agent that you are is it's so important that every single client you speak to feels that way. Yeah. You provide them that mm -hmm. level of comfort. You provide them that confidence that they're looking for to accomplish great things. Yeah. I want to wrap it up. I usually express my gratitude and how proud I am. No, I'm ready for this. <laughs> I'm not doing that for you. No. I'm just going to end it ice cold and say, see you later. No, in, no. in reality, um, we've had side conversations about how you've grown. Yeah. I still think there's so much more room for you to grow because I feel like you came ready out of the gate. Yeah. Like the bank wasn't your fit. They did some great training, which I wouldn't say to every place, every bank, but they, I think they did some great training, but you're just so passionate and you care so much about people that you'll be successful even when you move on to Starbucks. Like you are going to be, <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. You know what the great thing is, is she already knows her order. Yeah, so exactly. just let us know what location you're at. But you are such a great fit here. You're so passionate you. about the purple and the gold that comes through every single time. You're on the phone. It's a struggle sometimes for you to get to the door, but when you get to your desk and you start <laughs> talking to people, you leave such a positive impact and yeah. you have such a great, your finger on the pulse of like what's going on mm -hmm. and you are new but included in the interview process with what you call the OGs. And you are, I mean, you take that, you can take that. I know you don't, but you could take that for granted, but that's, that speaks to who you are and how you carry yourself here. And I'm really proud to have you on the team. Thank you. I'm proud to be here. Me too. <laughs> right. So you asked me just on a last note, I think during our six months, you're like, what's your five year plan? And I was like, it sounds small minded, but like here, like, I don't see myself truthfully doing anything because I genuinely love it here. So, yeah. well, what do we got? Two more years, three years to keep her? Yeah. All so right. Keep going. Will I make it to the end of this year? Ah, uh, that's another episode. Yeah. Thanks for, <laughs> thanks for, thanks for, for joining us. Two pieces. We'll see if you <laughs> come you. back. See you later. Okay. Do thanks. I see this before it goes live or no? No. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Bye. Bye.